Thank you, Catherine. October is Pregnancy, Infant and Child Loss Awareness Month, and it's a time to help and support those who are dealing with the unimaginable loss of a child. Joining us now to tell us about the resources available to parents and caregivers are Sharon Parker. She's a clinical program manager with Carilion Clinic Hospice and Sarah Cress. She's a certified child life specialist with Carilion Children's. Ladies, welcome to the show. Great to be with you Thank today. You. Yes. You and you know, this is, you know, this, like I said, is just an unimaginable loss. And I can imagine parents, caregivers, you know, don't know where to turn, but you offer so many resources. Uh, let's start with the Forget Me Not program. Tell us a little bit about that. So this program is something that is provided inpatient um, when someone experiences a loss and it follows afterwards by offering events in the community. Uh, we also have online resources that provide um, websites, books, different um, means for people to have that support that they need um, at a time that is very tragic and sad and unfortunately happens all too common. Right, yeah, and just, you know, um, dealing with that grief and that loss, um, I can imagine that it's it's different for everyone and the timeline's all different. We did a whole podcast on, on grief, mm -hmm. but um, just to have somebody there that can kind of guide them through and show them that yes, there are resources, there are people, uh, there's there's ways to kind of work through this kind of grief. Uh, you have the Carilion Centers for Grief and Healing. Tell me about that too. So the Center for Grief and Healing is a department that started about two years ago and it has grown uh, exponentially in a very short period of time. The Forget Me Not program partners with the Center for Grief and Healing and so we've been able to offer support groups in the past for perinatal loss. We also offer therapists who are able to provide individual counseling for someone who may feel stuck in their grief mm. and that's not just for someone who may have experienced a loss in the last year or so it could be for someone who's experienced a loss 20 30 40 years ago sure right and never got through it and, and never dealt with the grief never had the opportunity to talk right. to anyone about right. it right and didn't know where to turn mm -hmm. right yeah that's so important all right so Sarah let's talk a little bit about the on-site certified child life specialists yes. uh, you're one of those I am. so <laughs> tell me about what you do and about that service sure my job is really in helping children and families cope with difficult situations mostly for myself it's in the hospital um, but we are there to help provide support to families going through the most horrific time um, that we can be there to help prepare the children involved about what's going on, teach them about their loved one's diagnosis, about the medical equipment in the room, and if the child is terminally ill or at end of life, you know, helping support the family and how do they help that child through that grief? How do they best support them um, and kind of help give them some guidance on those topics? Um, we also offer memory making opportunities, which are just tangible items that the family can create with the child um, that they can like put their touch and their love into and then something that the sibling or the parent can take home with them. Mm, yeah, and that's such a good point because, you know, we often think of the caregivers or the parents in their grief, but mm -hmm. there are still little beings who are still trying to process and don't really fully understand what's going on. You really need right. somebody to kind of help them navigate through all of it. I didn't even That's think exactly about the equipment right. oh, either. Everything in the room. Yeah. So we're often helping support, you know, any age child coming to visit a loved one in the hospital. But if they are a five-year-old coming into an ICU, you know, how do we prepare them for that to minimize the trauma yeah. um, mm -hmm. and to help support their coping and find them a job to do at the bedside and something that they can really take ownership of um, in just any way possible. I love that you do that. All right, and then there's a lot of uh, events that you hold. Uh, you just recently offered a Walk to Remember event yes. as well as a seed planting ceremony. Tell us a little bit about the importance of having yeah. these kind of ceremonies. It's so important because people, as you said earlier, Natalie, grieve differently. And for some, it's a process of talking through, sharing their story. For others, it's doing something. And we know that the arts 
are a tangible way for us to process our grief. So the Walk to Remember incorporates all of that because we'll have individuals, we have it at Green Hill Park, and they'll walk down to the riverbank and collect a stone that speaks to them and then come back and paint that. Maybe it's initials, maybe it's a date, something that's special to them. They can create ornaments with strings that the colors represent different emotions they may be feeling. Um, it also can have stickers and different, you know, markers and things like that that make it specific to them. And then this last year, we offered um, beads where they could inscript words and make bracelets or necklaces. And uh, these mementos are so significant and you see them, Sarah and I see them just so painstakingly putting this together. And what's beautiful to me is oftentimes it's families who are coming. Mm -hmm. And so we see the children who were working and creating as well as grandparents. And, and I just want to call out grandparents because I think sometimes, you know, that is one um, group that is often overlooked. That's a good mm -hmm. point, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because they're grieving for their child. Right but they're also grieving over the loss of their grandchild. Mm -hmm. And if they've experienced a loss, they may have never, as we said earlier, had the opportunity to work through that themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it can be triggering to them. Yeah. So we've noticed that a number of grandparents come and they're creating you know, mm -hmm. these mementos as well. And so it does combine that creating and then sharing the story as we sit and hear them recall, yeah. you know, what's happened. Yeah, um, it's beautiful and you have to memorialize them in, in some yes. way. We're going to pop um, information up on your screen. We'll also have it on our website at WDBJ7.com. Sharon, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. We certainly appreciate yes. it. Thank you for thank allowing you. us. Okay, still ahead on here at home, the Science Museum of Western Virginia.